Beneficent, good morning. Give me a wave or something. Give me a smile. I want to see some some teeth today. <laughs> Everyone is looking all somber. I know we're back on Zoom. I get it. I understand. It's cold, y'all. I know. I get it. <laughs> uh, but it's still a blessing to be here on Zoom with you all. Welcome to service. For those who are visiting us for the first time, we are so glad that you have decided to join us today. And whether if you're here in person or you might be even watching this online or on, on YouTube in a few days or so, we're so glad that you decided to join us for our third Sunday of worship. No matter who you are, no matter where you are, no matter where you come from, no matter what you look like, no matter what you smell like, no matter where you are on the mental health spectrum, gender, sexuality, identities, no matter who you are, you are welcomed here. We are so excited that you decide to join us and I was thinking okay yes we're back on zoom right but what are some of the things that we can look forward to what are some of the benefits well have you had your cup of coffee this morning if you have not had your cup of coffee you can have your cup of coffee because you're at home you cannot bring the cup of coffee to the meeting house so that's that I see you Pat I see you there you go so it's okay to sip your coffee. I got a, a green smoothie. It's okay to sip your coffee, your tea, and there may be some other stuff in the cup. That's not me. To, I'm not here to judge. That's up to you. But listen, we're so glad you are here. I'm glad to see your smiling faces. Now let's go forth and worship for today. I will bless thee, O Lord. I will bless thee, O Lord. Morning, everyone. In the cradle of long nights and the quiet of snowbound days, be our warmth, O oh God. In the season of hibernation and slumber, be our shelter, O oh God. In the time of waiting for new life to burst forth afresh, be the seed growing inside us, O oh God. In the name of Christ Jesus, our light and life, the fires of our souls are banked and ready. Let us reach out to God now in prayer. O oh, thou sudden God, generous in mercy, quickener of new life, giver of new love, irreverent, subversive, deep source of yearning, startling comforter, bearer of darkness, unmaker of old paths, bringer of strange joy, abundant, disturbing, healing unlooked for, tender and piercing. Late have I loved thee, O oh, beauty so ancient and so new, amen. And now may the peace of Christ be with you. And also, and with, also you. with you. Let us greet one another. Hello. Good morning, everyone. 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 
Good morning. Good morning, Good morning everyone. Morning. Hello. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Good morning everyone. How are you doing? Good morning, Good morning everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. Say hello. Good morning, Irene. Hi, Irene. Oh, there's the dog. Good morning. Oh, I see Amalia. Hi, Hi yeah, Amalia. Now, Amalia. What are you wearing? That's... <laughs> are you being? Are you a unicorn today? <laughs> <laughs> nice. Diane Cochran is here. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. Hi, Diane. No wonder. I called her and her line was busy. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. She was good busy. Hey, Cindy. Hi, Joyce. Lucy Central. Hi. Hey, Joyce. Good morning, Miss Lucy. Good morning, Good morning, Richard Bradley. It's Lucy. <laughs> Shall we mute and move on to announcements? All right. If you are new to Beneficent, please let us know you are here with us by filling out the welcome form. There will be a link in the chat. And our moderator, Miriam Fitzell Jones, has an announcement for us. Good morning, everyone. Uh, as you know, the congregational budget meeting was scheduled to be today following the service. However, very recently, more information has come to our attention that needs to be considered by the Finance Committee and the Council, uh, and the budget perhaps amended. We will still hold the meeting to discuss an item related to the Palmer House, uh, but we'll postpone the other items to a later date. Uh, I appreciate your patience and understanding. Thank you. Thank you, Miriam. And anyone is welcome to attend our congregational meetings, although only church members may vote. And there is no separate Zoom link for that meeting. Just stay on the Zoom following the postlude and the end of worship. We'll continue worship now with the anthem. Gospel according to Luke. Then Jesus, filled with the power of the Spirit, returned to Galilee, and a report about him spread through all the surrounding country. He began to teach in their synagogues and was praised by everyone. When he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, 
he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. Here ends the reading. Good morning, everyone. I am your special guest children's moment for today. Uh, some of you may already know our own youth educator, Joshua uh, Garcia, Maria Garcia, is getting confirmed today. And uh, some of our youth and parents of our youth are celebrating that confirmation with Joshua. So I am filling in for Amy. And I have a confession for you. I had a tantrum yesterday. Oh, I had a good tantrum yesterday. I even used some bad words in my tantrum. Sorry, but I did. We all have our moments when we get frustrated and we lose our temper and things don't go the way we want. And that just sometimes happens. That's part of life. I was trying to put together a piece of furniture and the piece of furniture did not want to go together. Ah. Oh, so I thought to myself, well, if at first you don't succeed, be sure to whine and pout. Go stand in a corner and wave your arms all about. Say, I can't. I give up. Oh, what a loser I am. Or pick myself up, dust myself off, and try, try again. So eventually, I did exactly that, and I did try again, and I did get the furniture piece together. And I just wanted to share that with you because as we go through life, we're going to run into those things that frustrate us, going to get us upset. Sometimes we're gonna lose our temper. Sometimes we're gonna have very bad feelings about ourselves or about other people, but don't let it stop there. I know there is somewhere inside all of us, that little spirit of God that will help us pick ourselves up, dust ourselves off, and try, try again. We go to be the hands of Christ to scatter joy like seed and all our days to cherish life to do the loving deed Thank you, Kevin. Having put together quite a lot of furniture myself, I know that feeling. And thank you, Ernest, for your reflection. Will you all pray with me? Jesus, whisper in our ears today. Amen. Our gospel lesson today brings us Jesus still drying off after his baptism in the Jordan River and brushing the dust from his tunic after his 40 days of temptation in the wilderness. His mentor, John, has been imprisoned by Herod Antipas for criticizing Herod's marriage to his brother's ex-wife. 
Now, Jesus, having barely completed his apprenticeship, is in the hot seat, leading the messianic political movement that John founded. He wants to kick off his ministry in the place he knows best, with the people he knows best. So he heads home to Galilee. Jesus does what every new influencer does. He starts posting on social media and working the talk show circuit. Translated into first century terms, he makes the rounds of the synagogues, teaching and growing a following. And that's why today's lesson finds him observing the Sabbath in the synagogue he has known since childhood. Scholars believe that Sabbath, Sabbath worship at that time would probably include a recitation of the Shema, Hear, O Israel, the Lord is our God, the Lord is one, from Deuteronomy chapter six. Also the Ten Commandments and the Amidah, the central prayer of Jewish worship then and now. Several worshipers would chant the Torah portion and one would chant a lesson from the prophets and give a sermon. They would sing some Psalms in there and share a final blessing. The presence of Jesus in the synagogue stirs up excitement. He's a hometown boy who's become an overnight sensation. So it's no surprise they ask him to be the muftier, the honored one who chants the lesson from the prophets and gives the sermon. He stands up because that is the posture of respect and the Hazan, the worship assistant, hands him the scroll. Luke makes a special point of calling our attention to that scroll. Here's what he writes. Jesus stood up to read and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place, the place where he was to begin reading. We don't often hear of Jesus holding something in his hands. He gestures towards objects like the barren fig tree. He refers to objects like pearls and leaven and lost coins, but he doesn't often hold them in his hands. So since Luke has made a point of it, let's talk about that scroll. Jewish law dictates that scripture is to be written on the skins of ritually clean, kosher animals. By the time of Jesus, parchment had been invented by processing animal skins even further, soaking in lime water, rubbing with pumice stone and stretching on a frame. Strips of parchment are sewn together with threads made from the tendons of ritually clean animals to form a long scroll, both ends of which are wound around wooden staves. Writing is done with a reed pin split to form a nib. Scrolls containing Hebrew scripture are lettered by scribes, professional calligraphers. There are rules for scribes, thousands of rules. Each column of writing can have no less than 48 lines and no more than 60. The ink must be black and of a special recipe using tree sap, honey, and gallnut juice. If the pen slips and they allow two letters to touch one another, the entire document becomes invalid. They must say each word aloud while they're writing. They must wipe their pen and wash their entire body before writing the holy name of God every time they write it. Being a scribe is a high calling and every aspect of the work from mixing the ink to sharpening the pen to writing the Hebrew letters to muttering the words aloud as they're written, every aspect 
is to be done in a state of lishma, purity of heart. So the scroll Jesus is holding is saturated with holiness, inscribed with holy words by holy scribes, with holy intentions, using holy ink, with holy pens on the skins of holy animals. There is a layering of holiness here, just as there was in last week's story of the holy family in the temple. I have a hunch. Luke makes a point of mentioning the scroll to evoke a mood of reverence, to capture the heightened sacredness of this moment. Luke really knows how to set the stage. Jesus unrolls the scroll, finds his place, and takes a breath, but he doesn't read. He chants. The Haftorah, the reading from the prophets, is always chanted to a special cantillation that Jesus would have learned as a boy. The spirit of the Lord is upon me, he chants, because the Lord has anointed me to bring good news to the poor, has sent me to proclaim release to the captives and recovery of sight to the blind, to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. But that's not all that Jesus chants. One reason it is an honor to be asked to chant the reading from the prophets is because there are extensive blessings also chanted. One blessing before, four blessings after. One of the blessings after affirms faith that the words of the prophets will be fulfilled. Listen to that blessing. Trustworthy are you, Lord and trustworthy are your words, and not a single one of your words is recalled as unfulfilled because you are God, sovereign, trustworthy. Blessed are you, God, the God who is trustworthy in all your words. Jesus recites that blessing, God, you are trustworthy in all your words, he rolls up the scroll, gives it back to the Hazan, and sits down. And Luke tells us, the eyes of all in the synagogue are fixed on Jesus. Why? Because they're waiting for him to teach, to interpret the words of the prophet for them. He looks at them and says, today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. It's both exquisitely subtle and outrageously bold. He's just recited the customary blessing expressing confidence that the prophecies will be fulfilled. And then he declares, not that they will be fulfilled, but that they have been fulfilled that very moment. I've heard many preachers offer the opinion that Jesus says the scripture has been fulfilled because he's there. The son of God is there, the one who fulfills all of the law and the prophets is there, but that is not what Jesus says. He doesn't say anything about himself. He says the scripture has been fulfilled in their hearing, not because he is there, but because they are there. The worshipers listening in the synagogue have now heard the prophecy and they cannot unhear it. They have been summoned 
the work belongs to them now. It's off God's plate and onto theirs. Jesus is saying, tag, you're it. He's grown impatient, I think. Under John's tutelage, he's consumed a steady diet of prophecy and he's tired of waiting for the prophecies to be fulfilled. Good news for the poor, release for the captives, recovery of sight for the blind, freedom for the oppressed. He's tired of waiting for what Isaiah calls the year of the Lord's favor. That's a teaching in Leviticus chapter 25 that commands that every 50 years, Israelites who are enslaved are allowed to buy back their freedom, and those who have been forced to sell their land are allowed to buy it back as well, and further, that the whole Jewish community must help them do that. In Hebrew, that 50th year is called Yobel, meaning ram. It probably refers to the ram's horn, the shofar that is blown on the first day of a new year. The Hebrew word yobel is picked up in Greek as yabelaios, in Latin as jubileus, in Old French as jubile, and finally in English as jubilee. <laughs> Bet you never realized that when you say the word jubilee, you're talking about a male sheep. <laughs> There's no evidence that the Jubilee is ever actually observed in Israel. No wonder since slaveholders aren't keen on releasing their slaves and landowners aren't keen on turning their land over to its original owners. It would require enormous discipline and compassion as a society to enforce that. And the people of ancient Israel may have no more discipline and compassion than we Americans do today. So Jesus is tired of waiting for Jubilee and he's tired of people handing the heavy lifting over to God all the time, expecting that God will bring good news to the poor. God will release the captives. God will restore the sight of the blind. God will free the oppressed. So Jesus says, actually, the heavy lifting belongs to us. God has equipped us with everything we need to do this work to fulfill this prophecy. Jubilee is right there on the books, written into law. It's not that we can't do it. It's that we won't do it. Instead, we pray for God to work the miracle because we think it's too hard to do ourselves. Jesus says, this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. And that means the work belongs to us, to the Jews who follow Jesus in his time and to us who follow Jesus in our time. It puts, in, puts me in mind of words attributed to Teresa of Avila, a 16th century Spanish Catholic mystic. Listen to this. Christ has no body now but yours. No hands, no feet on earth, but yours. Yours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Yours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Yours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Yours are the hands, yours are the feet, yours are the eyes. You are his body. Christ has no body now on earth, but yours, yours and mine. 
You know, Beneficent Church is so blessed. We have more than our share of dreamers and idealists, people who expect a great deal from themselves and a great deal more from everyone else. More than our share of gifted creative spirits and outside the box thinkers and more than our share of misfits and scoundrels. We do amazing things here. And we can be so hard on one another, really hard on one another. What's up with that? And yet, I've never served a church more brimming with passion for making a difference in their neighborhood. A church more certain that personal redemption is important, but it is meaningless unless it brings societal redemption. A church more capable of mobilizing to actually do what Jesus charged us to do that day in the synagogue, bring good news to the poor, release to the captives, recover the sight of the blind, free the oppressed. And the reason we can do it here is because we are tethered to the source, to Jesus. We are tethered to Jesus, our source, amen? And our source is working through us and moving through us and speaking through us, amen? Listen, Jesus is whispering to us today whispering a word in our ears. And that word is Jubilee. Today, I recommit myself to Jubilee. I recommit myself to see beneficent through our present trouble, to bring us to a healthier place, to move us toward healing from the racism that lurks in the shadows here. I recommit myself to help us use our remodeled kitchen to actually feed the hungry, amen? To use our refurbished organ and new concert grand piano to become a center for the performing arts and for music education, amen? to use our ample financial resources to bring relief and justice and new life to the poor, the captive, the blind, the oppressed, and not just to stockpile our own wealth. Beneficent, we are not called to hoard our assets. We are called to give them away generously. Today, I recommit myself to make Beneficent an even more welcoming place for dreamers and idealists, for gifted creative spirits and outside the box thinkers, for misfits, for scoundrels, for everyone who attends this worship inside a Zoom box, but does not want to be trapped in any other kind of box, amen. And I recommit myself to do this in partnership with you. As Pastor Germaine reminded us last week, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. Okay, Beneficent, let's go far. Let's go together. And here's an invitation to all the new folks who've been worshiping with us in the past year. Jesus may be whispering in your ear too. Maybe it's time for you to cast your lot with us officially and become a member. We need you. And you need us. 
Because if we want to go far, we have to go together. Message me, call me, text me, email me if you are ready to take that step. We are tethered to Jesus, our source. He is whispering a word in our ears, and that word is jubilee. It's time for a little jubilee, beneficent. I'm up for a little jubilee, beneficent. And if you are too, go ahead and drop that word jubilee in the chat. And while you're at it, let all God's people also say, amen. Elizabeth, Jubilee, Jubilee. My soul says yes, being recommitted. Uh, and I hope you all says yes, say yes too. So, um, it's prayer time, Beneficent. Uh, I feel inspired. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Elizabeth. <laughs> to go for it, to go a little bit further than what I had wanted to before. So for those who are looking uh, to press on, that was your call. <laughs> that was your call. And so now we turn to God as we cast our cares upon the Lord. You might be dealing with something personally. You might be going through something. You might want prayer for yourself or for others. If there's something that you would like to lift up into the atmosphere, we can pray together. Please feel free to drop that message or the, that prayer request in the chat. So much going on in this world. Um, of course, we're dealing with coronavirus and Omicron. However, I did read somewhere this week that it was a retreat that is a sign for us. Praying for Messia, who's on life support. Told him, move toes and fingers. Amen. Praise God. For those who are struggling, um, who are battling uh, sickness and illness, you know, we've been talking about COVID-19 uh, every week. However, we know that people are dealing with things that are not at the forefront of uh, cancer. And we're dealing with those who are struggling silently with depression and mental illness. Great for you. Praying for all those who are struggling in the classroom and outside the classroom for our teachers who are struggling to put things back together during the season. Praying for all those who are in school. God sees you. God sees you and God will give you strength and focus your mind.
praying for all those who are struggling with loss. And I just see you praying for your late brother who just had a birthday this past month. Healing prayers for Joe McGuire. Lord, you know what he is in need of. He's in love and strength his way and healing his way. Oh, we're praying for Loretta, who has been displaced from a fire, sending prayers your way. Uh, Pat, Sister Pat. Praying for all those who are in the hospitals. Michael was praying for his medical, uh, his coastal medical work family. Praying for Laura Williams, who has. sickness, growth. We bind that spirit of cancer right now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for everyone. Uh, sending prayers for Joshua on his confirmation today. And yes, we are so glad that we can't be in two places at one time, Adrian. Uh, yes, we do mourn the loss of great singer <laughs> Meatloaf, who passed this week. Thank you, Brother Gibson. One of my favorite karaoke songs, I'll Do Anything for Love, yes. <laughs> Prayers for Shannon uh, and housing situation. Also, God, we know that you see us, but we need to be reminded. So God, I ask that you touch us right now, Lord, as we go forth in this service. You know, many of us are struggling from various issues, Lord, but we know that you see and you hear our prayers. So God, we petition you right now, Lord, whatever it is, whatever it is that our congregants may be feeling right now, Lord, whatever hole they may have in their hearts, Lord, fill it. Whatever sickness they may have in their body, heal it, Lord. God, touch them right now. The internal and the external, Lord. You know, some people have difficult housing situations, Lord. We ask that you provide a home, not just a house, but a home where they can feel safe. Praying for all those who have been displaced by fires and who are having issues during this cold season with plumbing, Lord. Praying for all those who are dealing with loss and grieving right now because there is no timeline or length on bereavement, Lord. Touch them right now as they go through life without their loved ones, without their friends and family. We know you can strengthen their hearts. So God, we're praying for all the issues that we're experiencing in states, but also issues abroad, Lord. Sending peace and angels to Russia that they may have peace on that side of the world, Lord. I'm praying for Ukraine right now. And all the leaders, love that Lord, let love penetrate their hearts. Let compassion flow through their minds, their hearts, and spirit. God, we know that you are not just the God of the United States of America, but you are the God of this world. And you hold all of your creatures and beings in your hand, God. And if there's ever an intervention, we know that you are the one that can do it. You and you only, Lord. So we thank you. God, we ask that you touch Beneficent as we go into this new season, this jubilee, this revitalization. We ask that you bring those who are willing to work and do the will of the church. We look forward to seeing each other in person again in the coming months. We look forward to being in the presence of fellow believers and worshipers, Lord. And until then, God, we thank you for the now. We thank you 
of the now. We thank you that even in the virtual space, we feel community, we feel love, we feel warmth, even as cold as it is right now. We feel the love and the smiles of our fellow brothers, sisters, and cousins, and all those who are part of the church. We need each other like we have never needed each other before. We need you, Lord. If we ever needed the Lord today, we sure do need you now, Lord. So God, we thank you. We thank you for visiting us this morning. We thank you for visiting us in our homes. We thank you for touching us and reaching us where we are. God, we will give you, be careful to give you all the praise and all the glory. Lord, we recite the prayer that your son, Jesus, taught his disciples on that faithful day. Our Father, Mother Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Anointing Fall upon me Anointing Fall on me Let the power of the Holy Ghost We sing our praises to the Lord for God's good and worthy. We give our whole selves, our talents and gifts to the church with the expectation that they be used to further God's dream for our world. Beneficent, your generous tithes and offerings on a weekly basis allows us to be a blessing to the greater Providence community. As a church, we promise to continue to use these gifts for the good of mankind. We promise to use them in love and mercy for others. Now let us worship God in our gifts and tithes. Then let us go to serve in peace the gospel to Spirit has empowered us. We go in the Jesus name. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise God, all creatures here below. Please join me in the prayer of dedication. Christ has no body now but ours. No hands, no feet on earth but ours. Ours are the eyes with which he looks compassion on this world. Ours are the feet with which he walks to do good. Ours are the hands with which he blesses all the world. Ours are the hands, ours are the feet, 
Ours are the eyes, we are his body. Christ has no body now on earth, but ours. Amen. Amen. Beloved, the worship is now finished. The service begins. Listen, listen. Jesus is speaking. Jesus is working. Jesus is moving. This is Jubilee. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm.